Hey guys, this is Shadsub Seven here with a brand new review. For today, we take a look at Lilac Wars, also known as Star Fox 64, the Nintendo 64's successor to the SNES original. So, looking at this game today, how does it hold up? Well, let's find out in the review. Now, what's interesting about the story here is it's the first time you get a backstory. The evil Andros, after turning the planet Corneria into a wasteland, was exiled to the planet Venom by General Pepper. When Pepper noticed strange activity, he sent the Star Fox team, Peppy Hare, Pigma Dengar and Fox's father James McCloud, to investigate the planet. However, Pigma betrayed the team and James McCloud was killed. Peppy barely escaped. Years later, a new Star Fox team, led by Fox McCloud, is called upon to put a stop to Andros and for Fox to avenge his father's death. Essentially, it's a remake of the story from the first game, but with the added backstory makes this game story more interesting. The gameplay for Lilac Wars is similar to the first game on the SNES. It's a third person plane flying game, and you have all the basic controls to shoot, boost, break, bomb, and do a barrel roll! New additions here include the charge shot ability, where by holding the A button you can charge your blaster and lock onto enemies. And this was also the first game to feature the rumble pack to give the game a deeper feel, however the virtual console version doesn't have rumble. With the analog stick controls, movement of the R wing feels a lot more fluent and precise, plus with the targeting system it's a lot easier to hit enemies. Also new to this game is the all new all range mode where instead of being on rails, you're given freedom of flight. Some levels are completely all range mode, and others are on rails. Other new moves you can do with your R-ring include the somersault and U-turn, which help out, especially during dogfights. And you can also go into first person cockpit view, however it's not entirely necessary, and I don't recommend it, because in the need of doing a barrel roll, it can make you feel nauseous. The way the levels work is you start at Corneria, end at Venom, but depending on what path you take can change the levels and even the ending. Lower paths have easier levels, the middle path is intermediate and the high route has the tougher levels. The way the map works is if you beat a level normally, you completed it and go to the next level, but if you achieved a hidden objective in the level, you accomplish it and get to progress to a higher path. Getting the path you want can be challenging and I like that. The levels themselves are all fun and action packed, plus they can have some variety to them. Two levels see you in the Landmaster, which is a tank that shoots more powerful shots than the R-Wing, and there's even an underwater level in the Blue Marine. There's also space battles, base defences, and a mission where you have to protect the Great Fox from missiles. I think one of my favourite levels in the game is the fire level Solar, where the heat gradually makes you lose health and you have to keep shooting fireballs for more health and also the epic area 6 level, where here Andros pulls out all the stops to make sure you never get to Venom. The boss battles are all creative, and what makes them so fun to fight is how they have unique ways of beating them, it's not just spam the fire button at them. And also this is the first time we meet the rival team, Star Wolf, and the dogfight with them is epic, and it really gives you the feel of fighting with someone who's on the same level as you. Depending on what route you take in the story, you might even have to fight them twice. So that's the gameplay for Lilac Wars. It's fluid, intense, varied, and just a lot of fun. In terms of graphics, well for its time it looked good, however they do look dated, and by that I don't think they've aged as well as some N64 or even some PS1 games have because it does look a bit basic in times, like with the flat backgrounds and very blocky characters. That being said though, there is a lot going on in the levels, and they do have some diversity in their designs. You've got like underwater, fire, desert, etc. So there is a lot of variety in environments and that. Whilst they do look a bit basic and not the best the N64 can offer, they're still appealing in their artistic style. Good for its time, but they are looking a bit old now, if you get to my drift. For music, this game has some great songs indeed. The score was done by legendary composer Koji Kondo, and the songs here really add to the levels in the game, whether it's militant themes for the action-packed levels,
for some more atmospheric themes. The soundtrack here does a very good job, and I loved all the songs. The sound effects are good, the blaster and plane sounds are all appropriate and fitting, and it sounds fine. As for voice acting, it's basic stuff. Not too great, but they're tolerable. Well, except for Slippy. Hey, what's the big idea? Whoa! Help me! Ah! So, the music is great. Sound effects are good, and the voice acting is okay. So, now for the rants. What problems do I have with this game? Well, there's one common problem that immediately springs to mind, and that's your team. When you're trying to concentrate on the enemies and environments, your team constantly needs rescuing from enemies. And no, it's not just Slippy, Peppy and even Falco need saving from time to time. They're supposed to help you in the levels, however more often than not they just get in your way. And why does this game have to have friendly fire? If you're not careful you might accidentally take out your teammates instead of the enemies, and this can be really frustrating when trying to go for the medals. Whilst the Landmaster was a cool addition and made a change from flying in the sky, aiming could be occasionally awkward. You can shoot enemies on the ground and sky, but you also move the tank whilst aiming, so it's more than one thing you have to concentrate on. But my least favourite level in the game has to be the planet Aquas with the Blue Marine. Here the movement and whole flow of the level just feels really sluggish, and visibility can be hard due to the fact that you have to keep firing torpedoes. It's just a really monotonous level. But Infinite Torpedoes is cool, and at least you don't have to worry about protecting your team. Doing somersaults works fine for the most part, but sometimes it won't work. It's a fairly frequent inconsistency that the move can either be your saviour or screw you over during the heat of the action. Also, spoiler alert, but the true final boss... Ugh, I HATE THIS FIGHT! Whilst it's not hard per se, it sure is annoying as fuck. His eyes are a bitch to take out, and after that, he keeps teleporting behind you and chasing you. You have to outrun this son of a bitch, then turn around and get him those few hits on him, but he'll keep teleporting, and he takes forever to beat. Uh, this fight is just TDS. Okay, ranting over. So, how does Lilac Wars hold up? Well, it's a textbook example of taking a great game and improving on it in pretty much every way. While some ideas could have been polished, most of it worked out for the better. I love the levels and how they had different ways of beating them. I love the satisfaction of blasting through the storms of enemies, particularly in Area 6, and I love the fight with the Star Wars team. Whilst this game is a bit on the short side, there is replay value thanks to the multiple story paths and medals. This game is currently on the Wii Virtual Console for a thousand points, and for a game as classic and as fun as this, that's a bargain. So, Lilac Wars ranks right up there as one of the greatest N64 games out there, and it's one of the best in the Star Fox series. And so, Tom's final score for this game? 9 out of 10. <laughs>